Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this lecture, I will continue to actually uh, talk about the properties of uh, the roots. So, let us fix again uh, some notations as before. So, we take uh, G to be finite dimensional semi simple Lie algebra and H is being a maximal toral subalgebra. of G. So, then we have this uh, root space decomposition G equal to H direct sum direct sum G alpha alpha coming from phi. So, where this G alpha or the simultaneous eigenspaces. So, those x in G such that the bracket H x is given to be alpha of H x for all H in H. So, we observed many things about uh, these uh, root spaces. So, for example, we proved that the span of phi is exactly equal to h star and 0 is not in phi and if alpha is in phi. So, then we observed that minus alpha is also in phi and if alpha is in phi and C alpha is also in phi for some C non 0. So, then we observe that C must be plus or minus 1. So, note that uh, for alpha beta is in phi. So, we also observe that this particular type of uh, roots beta minus beta of H alpha alpha this also must be a root. And this is something we proved using uh, SL2 representation theory. So, now what we will do? We will actually uh, kind of uh, so we are working over this H star, so which is the span of phi over complex numbers. So, somehow we want to bring down this uh, ground field to real numbers so that we can use some ideas from Euclidean geometry. So, for that purpose uh, we need to actually see how one can actually uh, bring down this complex numbers to real numbers. So, in order to do that, so we also proved this following we will use this fact. So, beta of H alpha is actually integer for all alpha beta is in phi. So, this is the fact that will be used in order to bring our ground field to real numbers. So, let us see how one does this. So, for that purpose let us recall uh, what we have done so far. So, we have identified uh, this H with H star via the killing form. So, this is something uh, very important we will use it again and again. So, this identification if you uh, recall so how, how we did it. So, we have this H to H star the map H goes to kappa of H comma dash. So, this map we actually proved it is an isomorphism. And given pi we associated the pre image to be T pi. So, in particularly the T pi is uniquely defined using the following uh, equation the kappa of T pi comma x is equal to pi of x for all x in H. So, this is how T pi is defined. So, now what we do we take the killing form that is defined on H star and then pull it back uh, to H oh sorry the killing form is defined on H. So, we will actually uh, push it to uh, H star. So, how we do again uh, we have this identification of H with H star using the killing form. So, now just use that identification. Uh, in particularly pi goes to T pi. So, that is the map we are going to use. So, so what we do we just define this uh, inner product or the bilinear form gamma delta to be kappa of T gamma T delta for all gamma delta coming from H star. Okay. So, now it is immediate that this form that we have defined is symmetric non degenerate bilinear form on H star. So, that because it will have all the properties that uh, 
the killing form that has on H. Okay. So, now what we will do uh, since this span of phi is H star we will actually fix uh, uh, some bunch of roots that is a basis of H star. Okay. So, span of phi over C is actually H star. So, in particularly there exists a basis alpha 1 etcetera let us say alpha L inside your phi. So, this is a basis of H star. So, we fix this basis and work with this basis. So, given beta inside phi, so we will write this beta as sum of C i alpha i where i range from 1 to n. So, now a priori the C i they are all coming from complex numbers. So, these are all coming from complex numbers. So, what we climb now? So, we climb that these C i's indeed they come from rationals for all 1 to n. Okay. So, this is again immediate corollary of beta of h alpha being integers. So, let us do this. So, we take this equation beta equal to summation C i alpha i i range from 1 to L. So, then we compute this twice beta of alpha j divided by alpha j alpha j. So, then you can see that if you replace beta by the summation C i alpha i and then use the linearity in the first variable of this form, then you get this is exactly equal to summation i range from 1 to L C i twice alpha i comma alpha j divided by alpha j alpha j. So, this is what we get. So, note that uh, this beta of h alpha, so this is nothing but twice beta of t alpha divided by kappa of t alpha comma t alpha. So, this is by definition twice kappa of t beta comma t alpha divided by kappa of t alpha comma t alpha. So, now if you identify the inner product gamma delta by this kappa of t gamma t delta. So, then you can see that. So, this forces that beta of h alpha is nothing but twice beta alpha divided by alpha alpha. We know that these are all integers okay, for all alpha beta inside phi. So, this is what we are going to use. So, in particularly this particular equation. So, if you treat C i's as unknowns, so then all these uh, numbers that are appearing here 2 beta alpha j divided by alpha j alpha j and then these numbers twice alpha i alpha j divided by alpha j alpha j they are all integers. So, this star can be treated as actually uh, system of L equations with uh, L unknowns over uh, in integers. So, so, this is just uh, immediate from uh, uh, beta of h alpha being integers. Okay. So, this star you can treat it like, so this is a system of L equations with L unknowns. So, again it is happening over integers in particularly. So, because to solve system of equations one has to go to the uh, field. So, the smallest field that contains z will be q. So, this is happening over q. Now, note that uh, this alpha 1 etcetera alpha l, alpha l that is the basis of h star. So, this inner product uh, sorry the bilinear form that we have defined. So, that is actually non degenerate on h star. So, that forces that if we take this matrix alpha i alpha j where 1 less than or equal to i j less than or equal to l. So, this l by l matrix. So, this l by l matrix. So, this must be invertible. So, now if this is invertible and then if you multiply each column by or row by some non-zero scalar that also must be invertible. So, then that would imply that uh, this new matrix which is twice 
alpha i comma alpha j divided by alpha j comma alpha j. So, this matrix this is also L by L matrix. So, this is also invertible. So, this is also L by L invertible matrix. So, since this is actually invertible matrix and all these entries are these are all uh, integers. So, that means the inverse of this uh, matrix one can obtain over uh, rationals. Okay. So, since this system of equation is actually defined over integers and uh, even uh, the matrix that is involved actually has inverse in, inside rationals. So, that forces that the C i's must be rationals. Okay. So, this immediately proves that C i's are all rational for all i range from 1 to L. So, now indeed what we have proved given any beta we proved that that beta must be inside span of this phi over q. Okay. So, that means if we denote E q by span of this phi over q. So, then you can see that this E q is also same as span of this alpha 1 etcetera alpha l over q. Okay. So, this is very very important uh, uh, q subspace of our h star. Okay. Of course, uh, to get uh, real vector space what we do we just uh, tensor over real. Okay. So, to get uh, this real space which we denoted by E. So, this is the real space. So, what we do we just take E q and then tensor over real and then over q. So, this is how we are going to extend uh, the scalars from q to r. But before that let us understand uh, what happens to the, uh, the bilinear form uh, when we actually restrict to this uh, E q. Okay. So, that is going to help uh, us to understand how the bilinear form will behave on E. Okay. So, note that uh, if we take this lambda and mu from h star, so then we can compute uh, the, uh, the bilinear form very explicitly. So, the bilinear form is given by kappa of t lambda comma t mu, but note that this t lambda, so this is actually add semi simple element. So, this is add semi simple element and how it acts? So, T lambda acts on H as 0 and then it acts on X alpha as just alpha of T alpha times X alpha and this is true for all X alpha inside G alpha. So, that means using this you can see that so this kappa of T alpha T mu which is given by the trace of add T lambda times add T mu. So, since add T lambda all T mu both are semi simple elements on uh, acting on this G. So, these are all the Eigen values that are given. So, that, that shows that if you compute this lambda mu, so this is going to be exactly equal to summation alpha of T lambda times alpha of T mu over alpha in phi. Okay. Because on H it is 0, so only on G alpha it will act as alpha of T alpha times alpha of T mu. So, this is the formula we have for all lambda mu inside h star. Okay. So, now if we just restrict this formula to beta where beta is coming from phi. So, then you can see that then beta comma beta. So, that is going to be equal to summation uh, alpha T beta times alpha again T beta. So, alpha coming from phi. So, now alpha of t beta, alpha of t beta, so then that will become square. So, note that alpha of t beta is nothing but given by kappa of t beta comma t alpha, so which is exactly alpha of beta. So, then this beta comma beta is exactly equal to summation alpha comma beta square where alpha runs over phi. So, now if you just uh, uh, divide by uh, 4 times beta beta square. So, then you get, get that 4 
divided by beta beta is exactly equal to summation uh, twice alpha beta divided by beta beta whole square where alpha running over phi. Note that these numbers are all integers and these are all non-negative integers. So, in particularly uh, you can see that this beta beta. So, that will be actually uh, positive integer. So, this beta beta now you can see that. So, this is sorry not positive it is a positive rational number. So, these are all squares okay, and this is actually <coughs> 0 if one only if beta beta is 0, but then you can see that if this is 0 then that will force us that alpha beta is 0 for all alpha in phi. Okay. So, that will force that alpha is actually in the orthogonal complement of h star, but uh, kappa is being non-degenerate. So, that will force that uh, kappa. So, the form that we defined on h star is also non-degenerate. So, that forces that this alpha is 0. So, that is a contradiction because alpha is sorry. Uh, so, this is for beta we have to write. So, this is uh, beta which is a contradiction uh, because to begin with beta we started with in phi. Okay. So, that forces that this product beta beta so that must be positive and that is also positive rational number because all these numbers are uh, non-negative integers. So, now uh, if we take lambda from E q then again you can see that if lambda if it is comes from E q. So, then the same formula tells us that the product lambda lambda is equal to exactly summation alpha lambda square where alpha coming from phi. Again since these are all non-negative squares and again if this is 0 if and only if alpha lambda is 0 for all alpha. So, this is 0 if and only if alpha lambda is 0 for all alpha in phi. So, that forces that lambda is in is in this h star perp, but that is already 0 okay, that is a contradiction. So, that tells you that this lambda lambda must be positive if and only if lambda is non 0. So, that is the definition of positive definite form. So, we need what we proved, we proved that the form that we defined on this E q. So, that must be positive definite. So, this is positive definite. So, now uh, if we take uh, this tensor with R, so then we can extend naturally this form to E q E. So, where E q tensor R if you take. So, then uh, one can extend the form to capital E. So, then here also we get uh, naturally the positive definite form. So, positive definite symmetric bilinear form. So, now if you have a real uh, real uh, vector space with the positive definite uh, bilinear form. So, that space will be called uh, Euclidean space. Okay. So, then E becomes actually Euclidean space. So, now because we are uh, came down to actually Euclidean space, so we can use all the information that we have for uh, in terms of this uh, Euclidean geometry. So, indeed we will actually use those information uh, uh, that constraints that we have already on the set of roots and then bit of this Euclidean geometry to conclude more about uh, the set of roots. So, so far what we have done uh, we can see that. Uh, so, we started with this h star and then we observed that this phi is it's actually spans this h star. So, the span of phi is indeed equal to h star. So, we fix the basis alpha 1 etcetera alpha l inside this phi. So, that is a basis of this h star. So, then what we realized? We realized that if you take span of 
uh, this alpha 1 etcetera alpha l over q then that must contain phi. So, that means the span of this q uh, span of this alpha 1 etcetera alpha l over q. So, that means be equal to the span of phi over q that is what we observed and then the form that we defined on h star if we restrict that to this E q then we proved that that form that is defined on this uh, E q must be positive definite. So, that is what we proved. So, then uh, to go from this uh, q vector space to r vector space what we did we just tensored over uh, we took this E q and then tensored over r over q. So, this is called extending scalars. So, now extending this bilinear form to this capital E we got actually Euclidean space. So, this way uh, we got actually the Euclidean space that is required. So, now I will summarize uh, what are all the properties of this uh, uh, roots inside this Euclidean space. So, here is a theorem. So, this is very important uh, theorem. So, let G H phi as above. So, that means uh, G is a uh, finite dimensional semi simple E algebra with the maximal total subalgebra H and then phi is the set of roots with respect to this pair G comma H. So, then uh, what we have we have this E that is also defined as above. So, then uh, again so you, this E is a Euclidean space. So, what we observed we observed that this phi is actually a finite subset of this finite subset of this E and 0 is not in E. So, these properties are there and the second property the span of this phi again over reals. So, that is going to be exactly equal to E. The third property if alpha is in phi. So, then minus alpha is also in phi. So, this is something we proved. The fourth property if alpha is in phi and c alpha is also in phi for some c non 0. So, now you can take it to be real number not a problem. So, then what we proved we proved that c must be plus or minus 1. The fifth property that if alpha and beta both are in phi so, then you look at this number beta minus beta of h alpha alpha, but beta of h alpha is given by twice beta alpha divided by alpha alpha. So, we write that beta alpha divided by alpha alpha alpha. So, this must be again a root. So, this is very important uh, property. So, now uh, what is more? So, not only this, uh, so if we take again alpha beta inside phi, then these numbers that we were looking at beta of h alpha which is 2 beta alpha divided by alpha alpha, we observe that. So, they have this integrality property. So, this is very important uh, property called integrality. So, if a finite subset that does not contain 0 satisfies all these conditions. Okay. So, that will be called actually root system. So, this phi inside E is called root system if it satisfies all those above property satisfies all the prop all properties that is in 1 to 6. Okay, so, this is the definition of root system. So, indeed what we have done now, so we have started with this uh, semi simple E algebra and have fixed uh, this maximal total subalgebra. Then with, the res with this uh, respect to this pair we associated this uh, what is called the set of roots. So, which is of course, very much uh, depends upon the choice of uh, maximal total subalgebra for time being. And uh, so, given this pair G comma H, 
we have actually associated this uh, phi of h which is sitting inside this Euclidean space E. So, this is the root system that we have associated. Okay. So, later what we are going to prove okay, this is uh, look ahead. So, we will prove that uh, so, this association is actually independent of uh, the choice of this cartons sorry the maximal subalgebra. Okay. What is the meaning of that? So, this is the fact if h and h dash, so both are maximal uh, toral subalgebras, maximal toral subalgebras of G. So, then one can prove that the h and h dash they are conjugate. So, conjugate means there is an automorphism of G that maps h to h dash. Again, this uh, automorphism can be chosen from inner uh, inner automorphism. So, they are conjugate under some inner automorphism of some inner automorphism of of G. So, recall what is inner automorphism. So, inner automorphism it is a subgroup of automorphism. So, it is subgroup of automorphism of G. So, which is actually generated by this exponential of ad x where x is in G such that ad x is nilpotent. So, this subgroup is called uh, uh, the subgroup of inner automorphism of G and we will prove that any two maximal toral subalgebras. So, they must be actually conjugate under some inner, inner automorphism. Now, using this so, once you have this G H and then this G H dash, now you know that G and G H and H dash they are conjugate. So, then if you look at, so then this will imply since H and H dash are conjugate. So, using this we will get that this phi of H will be isomorphic to phi of H dash as root systems. Okay. So, that means this association that we did by fixing this maximal sub toral subalgebra. So, this root system that we associated this phi of h that becomes independent of the choice of h. So, that is actually a very big result, but anyway. So, that is what we will prove. So, that uh, actually tells us that this association that we have made now it is actually a well defined map from the isomorphism classes of semi simple Lie algebras to the isomorphism classes of root system. So, basically uh, this allows us to define the map from the isomorphism classes of finite dimensional semi simple Lie algebras to the isomorphisms of isomorphism classes of finite root systems. Okay. So, we will never consider the infinite root system, but anyway I am just writing it as finite root system. So, what is the association is given? You take G and then fix carton inside G and then send it to the root system associated this pair g comma h. So, later we will prove that for each root system we will be able to construct uh, one finite dimensional semi simple Lie algebra. So, that this map okay, which we call it uh, phi or phi this map is actually surjective. So, again later we will prove that this map is also injective. So, proving this map is injective is not that hard actually uh, proving uh, this map is surjective is bit hard. Okay. So, indeed this map we will prove that. So, this is the ultimate theorem okay. this is the ultimate theorem that this map phi is indeed gives us bijective correspondence between B 
between this uh, isomorphism classes of finite dimensional Lie algebras, isomorphism classes of finite dimensional semi simple Lie algebras and the isomorphism classes of root systems. So, this way we will actually bring down our uh, problem of classifying finite dimensional semi simple Lie algebras to the classifying uh, this uh, finite root systems. Okay. So, actually we will do all these works later. So, now uh, because we have associated uh, uh, given Lie algebra given finite dimensional semi simple Lie algebra to this root system. So, we will actually take this abstract properties of root system and then try to understand the root system much more. Okay. Using these properties we will actually first understand the uh, abstract root systems and then uh, we will just classify them. So, that will be just a combinatorial uh, ideas okay, not much uh, algebra will be needed there uh, in order to classify this uh, root system. Then after that later if we get time we will go back to this uh, war fee map and then see how one can actually start with the root system and then construct finite dimensional semi simple Lie algebra whose root system will be the root system that we started with and we will also see why this map is actually injective. Okay. So, this will be the ultimate goal of this course uh, proving that this phi is actually gives us bijective correspondence and using this bijective correspondence we will bring down the classification of finite dimensional semi simple Lie algebras to the classification of uh, this finite root systems and then we, uh, we will complete uh, the classification of finite root systems. Okay. So, this is our ultimate goal. So, uh, we will actually slowly move into that. So, as I said, uh, uh, so in the next class onwards I will focus on uh, root systems and then we will actually try to classify all the finite root systems. Okay. I will stop here. Thanks.